What's up, everyone? I'm What's up, everyone? I'm Stephen Harold, Tiny House Listings. In the last few weeks, I've been out here in my off-grid property, uh, kind of doing some good old-fashioned social distancing. I uh, just felt all the crazy stuff going on in the world right now, but it's actually given me the opportunity to take care of a lot of projects out here that should have been taken care of a long time ago. And uh, one of the things I've been working on is an outdoor kitchen. <clears throat> and the idea is to make this thing pretty self-reliant where I can cook with biomass and fuels, sticks from the ground, uh, also collect rainwater, which is kind of going to be the focus of this video. Uh, I already had this whole system kind of set up where it collects rainwater, but a lot of the water stayed in here and kind of caught, uh, got algae from sitting in the sun. So today I'm going to show you some ways you can do, some things you can do to prevent that um, and kind of give you an idea how this whole little rainwater collection system works. The idea of this is mainly to be able to wash dishes and also have plenty of water to filter through my Berkey filter, which is probably the most amazing thing I own because, of course, water, fresh, clean water is uh, obviously very important. Uh, so I'll kind of take you through what I'm doing today and kind of bring you along. Just some projects I'm out here working on anyway. And I'm actually thinking about doing a series of the things that I've been working on. I've got probably a dozen projects. And um, a lot of them I think would be really interesting for those who want to be self-reliant, off-grid, maybe even away from people uh, during the time a situation like this. And the interesting thing is, with Tiny House Listings, we've seen a really big uptick of people wanting to live tiny and off-grid. And I think uh, a lot of that has to do with a lot of the craziness going on in the world right now. Whether or not you're concerned or not, uh, there are some things going on. And uh, even when there's not, it's good to always be prepared in some to some degree, I believe, and have uh, a little, you know, some of the basics of the things you can take care of yourself. Fresh water, maybe some electricity and things like that. But uh, I'm kind of rambling, so let me take you through and show what I'm up to. Got some Rego pumping in the background, but this is the way it works. This is my outdoor kitchen. You can see it's very, very primitive. Uh, but the water comes on to the roof, and you can see I have it kind of as a slant right there as you go down. And so the water by gravity comes down this way, reaches through here. I'm gonna put a filter in there to filter out a couple things along the way, some sediment and things like that. Then it'll come down, and I have it kind of taken apart right now, but it'll filter into here. And uh, the reason I have it taken apart is because I went through and scraped a lot of the algae out. And the algae had gotten pretty bad in there because it had set over the course of several months. And so what I had to do was put bleach in there in a water solution. And you can't really reach down in there. So I made this little neat contraption. I screwed a paintbrush to a stick <laughs> and kind of scrubbed it around, rinsed it around. And then I kind of, this thing isn't really hooked up so I could tilt it, let it spill out onto the ground. Uh, and now so everything in there is perfectly clean. And so now we're ready for the next step. So if you're not familiar what this is, this is called an IBC tote and it holds about 175 gallons and these are very commonly used like in uh, industrial areas where there's like large scale cooking and things like that. This one actually was only used once and it held like a sugary mix for a candy facility and um, I got it for 40 bucks on Craigslist. I actually got four of these. I went and found that they were brand new and I've just like loaded up a trailer and just so we have four of them out here and we're going to get some more. Uh, but this holds 175 gallons and ideally um, what I'm about to do, which is going to be painting this thing, uh, you want to do this right when you get it. And this that just didn't happen here. I got sidetracked on other projects and things like that. But the reason you want to paint this black is to prevent UV rays from coming through because these things are very susceptible to algae as we've seen before. And um, what happens is this one is almost directly, there's no shelter above it. And a lot of times when people have rainwater catchment systems using these or others, um, it's in a, under a shelter, so it's not as big of a deal, but it's still a good idea because UV rays can still get through. Um, so the goal is, what we're going to do today is paint this black, and uh, that'll prevent the UV rays from coming through and also slow or inhibit uh, algae growth. And there's a couple other things we can do as well to prevent that. So the type of paint you use isn't super important. Get the cheap stuff, but to make sure it'll, one, is outdoors, and two, will adhere to plastic. Because this is one of those things you want to kind of do this project and sit and forget it. You don't want to keep coming back having to do this because it's a pretty primitive project obviously and you just want to kind of just do it and let it work for you. So there's only one coat on now because there's some rain coming in and I don't want it to smear and all that from the rain comes but this would be a good chance to 
kind of be out here and see how this whole system works. I really have never been out here while it's raining. Um, so this will give me an idea and see like if there's any improvements that need to be made, things like that. Here in North Carolina, catching rainwater is absolutely legal. In a lot of states it's not, so you need to check and find out uh, that for yourself, which to me is mind boggling that it wouldn't, you wouldn't be allowed to catch rain. Um, some of the excuses I've heard is that it messes up the ground table of water and things like that. But uh, I just, I don't know, if you have a, what, a thousand gallons of water, just over the course of however many small buildings we have out here that we're catching water on, um, it just, that, to me, that, that doesn't make sense. Um, to be completely honest with you, I think it's so people can continue to pay for water. And um, I don't think that's okay. <clears throat> out here on this property, I've kind of, right from the beginning, I've uh, decided to go with, instead of drilling wells and all that, is to collect water because from what I've noticed, with a few sizable roofs, it's quite easy to catch more than enough rain for several people. So yeah, out of solar, all the different off-grid system systems we have out here, I've noticed the easiest and most maintenance-free is this, is the collecting the water. And uh, that's just one more bill, one more issue that you don't have to worry about uh, if you're living off-grid, is collecting it yourself. There are much, much, much larger water tanks that are made for specifically for harvesting rainwater. These are not that, uh, but they're very, very cheap, very uh, accessible, lots of them out there. Uh, so the IBC totes, a, a great place that I found is on Craigslist again. All right, so the rain's coming here in a second, so we'll see how this whole system works. I used this screen that I cut out to uh, prevent critters and other anything else that we don't want to to get in there. And this is the uh, water inlet. This is for, we have a small water pump here. I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, so this goes down in there to actually siphon water from the tank. We decided to do that from the top instead of the bottom because if there ever were to be a leak at the bottom with the valve open, it could cause some issues and you'll come out here and not have any water at all. So we decided to do from the top. Put the top back on first. Um, yeah, this is the top that comes with it and I cut a hole out, obviously, to uh, allow myself to put the water hose back in there that we siphoned from. goes back in there like that so here's how it all works here's a small 15 watt panel and beneath down here I have a small uh, battery charger mounted and this prevents the battery from overcharging so the solar panel goes through the battery charger then right up here to this very small uh, battery this is all rudimentary I'm gonna make it better in the future um, then we have a really small water pump and to turn it on I don't have a switch or anything yet but you just kind of touch that Then you have water pressure. To install a sink in my outdoor kitchen out here, and I got this from the Habitat for Humanity for 15 bucks. I like to buy from those guys whenever I can, good calls. Uh, but yeah, this comes from the water pump that I showed you a second ago, and we could, and it's just a hose, and I can go this way or that way. And for now, the way I have it set up, I might change it as this drains into here, over there into a hole. Um, but it doesn't drain that well out here because we have a lot of clay, so I might move on to something else, let this drain way out into the woods or build something larger way out there just to get all the sediment and all the food particles away from here to prevent bugs and things like that. Uh, I will show you how this works, but we have no water because I drained it to clean it, uh, but I've used it before, and you just kind of put a stopper in there and then whatever, it's very much like a regular house, and uh, so far when I did have water, it worked really well. Yesterday afternoon and last night we had a small rain come through, but it wasn't anywhere in near like it was expected to be, so hopefully we got that much rain. But you can see this, see this filters out a lot of the debris that comes out off the roof. You look down in there, probably 20 or 30 gallons. Yesterday was 85 and sunny here in Eastern North Carolina, and today it's in the 40s and cold and rainy and damp. So I guess it's the time of year where you really can't predict what's gonna happen. But uh, yeah, last night we had a small rain come through. We got maybe 30 gallons of rain, uh, not a whole lot, uh, but uh, I know this system works for sure. So yeah, if you take this approach and you get IBC tote to hold your water, make sure you paint it black, and especially if it's in the sun, even if it's not in the sun, you need to. Um, and uh, I think rainwater is an excellent way to get water for use for your tiny house. Um, another option we could do here is drill down, I think it's only 70 feet, and be below the water table. Um, and so we can, where we could get plenty of water, and that might be the case in the future. Uh, but for now, we found that uh, harvesting rainwater, which is absolutely legal here in North Carolina, is an excellent way to go. More than enough water. And if we had more people living out here, or you can see for yourself to kind of determine how many gallons you're using per day and then look at the rain charts and things like that, you can just add more tanks. 
uh, and even more surface area to collect from. Uh, but overall, collecting rain uh, for your water usage, I think, is a fantastic way to go. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.